but it's kind of weird to write an introduction for the film in a certain way because in a way who doesn't know Milton Glaser <laughs> even if you're not a designer you would come in contact with his work but I think we'll get to know him a little bit better this evening I'm um, um, of course, many people are familiar with Milton Glaser's work, who's arguably the best-known American graphic designer. If you don't know Milton Glaser, you most, uh, most certainly have seen his work, either in, like, for example, New York Magazine, which he co-founded with Clay Felker, and of course designed, or the iconic I Heart, or I Love New York campaign, um, or perhaps those things closer to us in Minnesota, such as his famous Bob Dylan poster, or even more recently, the new graphic identity for the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. Um, Milton Glaser, to inform and delight, is the directorial debut of Wendy Keyes and portrays the full breadth of Glaser's remarkable output, offering us a rich portrait of the designer, glimpses into the everyday moments of Glaser's personal life, and captures immense humanity, intelligence, and creativity. I'm pleased to welcome to the Walker Arts Center the director, Wendy Keyes, who will provide a brief introduction to the film and will return at the end of this screening to answer some of your questions. And I believe we are webcasting the Q&A segment of this. I see some nods from my people, right? And so we'll have runners in the aisles with microphones in order to capture your questions so that the online audience can hear that. Um, so if you could raise your hand and wait for that mic. It's kind of painful wait. It's sort of like the satellite delay on CNN, but it works better on the, for the viewers at home. So a little bio for Wendy. Wendy Keyes served as executive producer of programming for the Film Society of Lincoln Center and a member of the selection committees of the New York Film Festival and the New Director's New Films, an annual series co-sponsored with the Museum of Modern Art. She currently sits on the Film Society's Board of Directors. As a director and co-producer of the Film Society's annual tributes to major film artists and actors, Laurence Olivier to Al Pacino, Elizabeth Taylor to Meryl Streep, and directors such as Robert Altman, Martin Scorsese, and Francis Ford Coppola. Key serves on the board of directors also of the Human Rights Watch, and is founder of the Toronto Committee for the Organization. Please help me welcome Wendy Keyes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. Nice big audience. Uh, it's, it's very strange for me to be in this position because I'm usually in Andrew's position and, uh, you know, introducing the filmmaker. But I just want to tell you one of my motivations. In my work at Lincoln Center curating film programs, I did two uh, film uh, programs that related to design, one on production and costume design, which I titled Designing Dreams, and one on movie title designers, which, which I titled Words on Film. And one of the things that I discovered was that uh, the designers themselves, and these were, these were the top people in their fields, really felt that they were very rarely acknowledged or saluted. And it was true. Most of them came in from London or Los Angeles on their own dime. I didn't have much of a budget. And they were thrilled to have had some attention paid. And while many of you know Milton Glaser, um, because of your either because of your AIGA affiliation or or because you're smart, um, I just feel <laughs> that um, you know the d designers, unlike artists or architects, are not that well known in the mainstream. Now, now there are some films being made, Helvetica and Objectified, which I think you showed recently. But that was one of my motivations: is just to get the word out about these remarkable people that uh, create the things that surround us in our daily lives. So I hope you enjoy the film, and I look forward to talking to you afterwards. Thank you. Hello. Um, what I've always been impressed with Milton Glaser's work is his extraordinary... Um, I'm here. Oh, there. Thank you. Um, his extraordinary historical knowledge. And with the advent of the computer and the advent of so much information, did he ever feel that, to a certain extent, we are losing that historical memory that has so informed his art, and to a certain extent uh, brought a super, certain superficiality to contemporary design? Well, as, he, as you saw him mention in the film, he has an, a, a sort of an aversion and a, perhaps a, a sort of a fear of the, of the computer in that he... Um, he does not initiate his work on the computer the way other designers and architects do. 
And he uses it, you know, it, to finish the work, but he doesn't initiate it. Everything comes from the drawing to begin with. And the office, as you could tell, was all driven, the work there was all driven by the computer. They're, you know, it's another generation of people. But in terms of, of um, referring back to his incredible encyclopedic knowledge, he keeps that refreshed within himself as a teacher. He's still teaching at the School of Visual Arts. He still does that master's program. He's 81. He works four days a week. And um, I think what he wants to do is to continue to encourage people to learn what they can, however they can. Yes. Hi. Uh, Hi. I think Milton is such an icon uh, in design, and I'm wondering if you uh, encountered something that was very surprising that, aside from the entirety of the movie, <laughs> but, <laughs> but something that really struck you as a surprise that going into this you wouldn't have guessed. Well, actually, I, I made it because when I first heard him speak, I was surprised that someone who was so visual was could be so verbal. And that was what I wanted to share with, with audiences who had never experienced hearing him. I mean, one can read him because his essays are in his, his books of his work, but he is such an extraordinarily articulate and charismatic and big person. You know, he really sort of overwhelms that, that format of... Of being a lecturer or or, or, or a teacher, and um, so I that did not surprise me. But I did learn little things along the way. I didn't know that um, he had uh, done all the work for the nation pro bono for thirty years until Katrina Vanden Heuvel mentioned it. I knew that he had done the work, obviously, and that he was very involved in doing the nation buttons and that they had a, a, a good relationship. But, um, you know, those those were the kinds of things that I, I learned along the way. I had known Milton's work well before I started the film. We were both on the board of directors of the International Design Conference that was held in Aspen, and I did the film program for them. And, of course, he was the, the sort of the king of the hill. He was the giant designer in the group, and we were we were very friendly. And uh, he and Jivan, who you see talking in the purple shirt in the Vienna woods, uh, would entertain everybody. And so I knew him that way. So I knew the range of the work, but I didn't know the depth of the work. And he, yes. Well, it seems like almost nobody draws anymore, and I'm just wondering a lot, so much of his work is revolves around that. I'm just wondering, when he does his classes, does he emphasize the uh, importance so that you can, you know, gain a depth that you can't without you knowing know, how to draw? I don't know. I've never attended his classes. I'm I'm not from the design world, so I, I don't, I can't, it's hard for me to sort of, from my point of view, put him in, in that perspective, but... I, I I would imagine, as as Brookie Maxwell says, there's things about Milton, the things that he believes in his processes of work, that he doesn't say overtly, but you can't help but learn them over over time with him. Yes. Oh. First of all, thank you. It was really wonderful to get to see it. Oh, and I'm wondering, what is the relationship between time taping him and what you've distilled for us here? Well, as you can see, there are some references to years gone by when he talks about uh, politically, you know, the dark year. We're in the middle of the dark years. I mean, that was obviously, um, that was obviously during another administration. Um, I, uh, I had... Take, it took me five years to shoot to make this, and that was mostly because I had a day job. He was available throughout. He couldn't have been more a more agreeable subject and more available and obviously more articulate. Um, but I, I was also working on the cheap with a film crew that was also not that available, so it really did take a long time. But I would... Also, in the meantime, I would be reading a lot of what his writings were, so I, I kept going back to him and wanting him to get to say on film what he'd said in print before. 
and without asking him to sort of read cards, which wouldn't have suited him at all. But um, so it, it, I was really, it was really trial and error for me as a first time director. And I should have known better. I was married to a filmmaker. I've been on a million film sets. But, you know, it, I just didn't have a clue <laughs> as to what I was doing. At first, I thought I was just going to shoot him and then turn the footage over to a more accomplished filmmaker. But then once I had the footage, there was no way I was going to give that to anybody. So it took a while. Yes. Who's your next subject? Well, thank you. Um, I don't really know. I'm going to really sort of work this down to the ground. Um, the film is showing now in, in New York commercially, and uh, we're on our second BAFO week. And um, we're, it is going around. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Well, Bafo in relative sort of way, not Star Wars Bafo, but um, it uh, it's being shown around the country. AIGA has been helpful in finding venues around the country. Um, what I might do is um, because I used to do the annual tributes at Lincoln Center for years, I may do a compilation film of some of the highlights. You know, I'm just not sure, but whatever it is, it will have to be something that you know, fits right, because with this, I'd never really had the burning desire to make a film, um, except for my dog, my vacation, I guess, but I I just felt that this was, it was necessary to make a film about Milton because of our relationship. By the way, we were never sweeties, I just want to get that. <laughs> um, be, because we'd known each other so well for so long, I felt that we could do it comfortably together. Yes. Um, a technical question: What did you shoot it with, and how did you usually mic him? Well, it was HD. It was HD uh, digital and uh, high definition, and um, I um, I had a soundman, and I so I had a sort of a wandering boom for a while, and then I couldn't afford him anymore, so we sort of mic'd him. Just I, I don't know what it was called, but the cinematographer, who was also the editor. I mean, it all became very distilled as we went along, as my money was running out. By the way, Target helped uh, me a little bit with. Well, they helped me. They were generous with a grant to help me finish the film, and uh, because of this, you know, the story of the. Um, of the pharmaceutical bottle. And, and weirdly, the last time Milton ever got on an airplane was to come to Minneapolis to pitch the pharmaceutical bottle with Deborah Adler, which you know speaks to his you know, generosity as a mentor and a teacher to help her, his student, to make this happen with his connections at Target. So he's never traveled since. I mean, he's fine, but he's, he's got heart issues and just doesn't travel anymore. So Minneapolis was his last spot. Yes. When you laid out this project, did you consult with him about what topics would be covered? N no, I didn't. Um, uh, because it really, as I say, it is a subjective point of view. I did vet the speakers. And I had some great ideas, and he would say, well, you know, I don't. That person doesn't really know me well enough. You know, this may be some. And he was right because I thought, oh, well, David Byrne loves him and would talk about him. But it, it, I didn't want to go sort of that way. Um, and I and it is is subjective. So the points that I wanted covered were the points that I'd heard him express either in person or in writing. The only time we actually had an argument was when I had so, shown him a f some footage of the, the montage of the work, and he didn't want different colors behind the posters. And one should never get between Milton Glaser and color swatches. You know? ah. so, but, but actually, I kind of won, because he wanted just a white background with the posters. And I said, I really need to change, just to keep you know the visual interest high. And it was sort of dicey for a couple of days. <laughs> I had one more question. Did yes. you now that you're done with it? Did you wake up one night and say, "Oh my God, we didn't cover X, Y, or Z"? Uh, n no. Well, actually, I had enough time to think of that because well, I was here about a year and a half ago in Minneapolis to show it a much shorter version, a considerably shorter version to Target because they had helped sponsor it, and. Um, 
So I had, and the distributor was interested in bringing this up to a theatrical length. So I had time to think, what are the other themes that I want to develop? And that's when I went to Katrina Vanden Heuvel, and actually, she touched on something too that um, nobody else had, was which is that he was an intimidating person. But you know, when he was younger and bigger and fiercer, you know, and and you know the reputation was in full flower. He was kind of scary. And uh, I'm glad that she was able to sort of make that point. But, um, so that was the only footage that I added. But I, well no, there was additional footage where I went back to him and asked him to sort of fill in some blanks that I had wanted. And then I extended uh, Walter Bernard, who I think is a wonderful subject on film. I think he's got a great screen presence and tells a story well. Yes. Um, since this was your first uh, directorial um, film, did you enjoy the process? And um, what were some of the key learnings that you got from it? I had to learn quickly because the first day of shooting, I thought, okay, I've got this great subject. He's in his room, his very attractive sort of conference room. I've got a great cinematographer. And I sort of went, okay, one, two, three, go. And they said, go where? What are we doing? <laughs> you know? And I thought, oh my God, I wasn't prepared at all. So I started throwing out questions. And then the cinematographer started throwing, and the editor started throwing out questions. And he was getting a little uh, upset. And so I realized, OK, we have to take a break and convene. And I told everybody that they couldn't ask questions. Only one person could ask questions. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was pretty stupid. But. Um, I um, uh, I just I really did love the process and actually actually if I could drop one name or maybe one you know one of several I mentioned to Woody Allen that I was making this film and uh, he said I have one piece of advice for you and this is something I discovered when I realized I was going to make a film a year for the rest of my life he said you have to enjoy every part of it. When you're writing, don't wish you were shooting. When you're shooting, don't wish you were editing. Enjoy the writing when you're writing and the shooting when you're shooting. And I, I really held on to that because actually my favorite part really is the editing. But I thought, you know, gee, he's right. And it's what a, what a strange person to tell me how to enjoy myself because I, you know, it's the least <laughs> libidinous person I know. But it was good advice. So I kind of held on to that. Will there be an extended version of this available? No, I mean, this will be released on DVD with, with special features, but um, I, I'm not gonna, sh the, this is it, 73 minutes is it. I have to say, you know, when I was first going through my birth pains with this, and I thought, okay, I'll do a sort of a light, colorful bobble and trip along the surface and do something maybe with some animation, keep it light and bright, and that's obviously not what I really want to do because I wanted to capture as a, him as a man, not, not the work as much as really how extraordinary he is as a man. And then I thought I would put it into a sort of a, a day for a, a day in the life format, but that was too fake. I could that didn't work at all. So um, then it really took its own form. But when I realized that it was going to be the definitive Milton Glaser documentary, it really sort of heightened my nerve and heightened my focus too. It was it was sort of it, I felt sort of the awesomeness of the task ahead. So. I was, how did you go about getting the funding in place? Um, well, I asked some friends, and some were generous, and some said, you know. And um, uh, I actually went to some of Milton's clients, as you could see by the end credits. Target was helpful, uh, Brooklyn Brewery, School of Visual Arts. And uh, that was basically it. It, was, it came to about, um, about $100,000. And who did the title credits in the opening? Milton. They're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I do have to say that we were doing a Q&A last week uh, in New York. And 
while watching it, I'd never he he. I th in talking about it afterwards, he really did feel his own mortality. I felt that there was a, a real seriousness as he was talking about it afterwards, and um, you know he was talking about dying at his desk and uh, you know the, the the fearsomeness of seeing your whole life and what's great ahead of you. And I said, Milton, you know you've got you've got the Southampton campus. You just did Trump's vodka bottle you've got all kinds of things that you're doing constantly but it it was it was very interesting to see him feel so, so sober by you know watching his life go by it wasn't the first time he'd seen it but it just struck him last week for some reason any other questions well i'd like to th oh Yeah, a couple a couple months ago, they had a uh, documentary about Philip Glass. Uh, the I think it's just called Glass, and uh, I love both films. And it struck me how similar they were. They both are in many ways, and part of it is just their amazing clarity and the way that their eyes look at you. You know, and so if you could just talk a little bit about uh, the experience of working with somebody who is so clear about what he thinks and the way that he works. I'd love to see the, the Philip Glass film, by the way. I haven't, I don't know, I know of it, but I haven't seen it. Milton is very clear, and he, 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 he just gives great interviews, too. So, I mean, you could just turn the switch and he'll, he'll talk. My challenge <clears throat> was to try and thread all those themes. I mean, there's a multitude of themes besides the work. It, through sort of a biographical story, and the bio, you know the story of him going to Bologna it was tremendously important in shaping the rest of his career, and working with Morandi and really seeing Italy and understanding that design can take from all the different historical parts of the you know past, and um, and then it was just. For me, the challenge was not to make sense of Milton, but was to, to try and get as many of the features of Milton as possible into the film, because I think his outreach towards people, his populism, his influence, is really so extraordinary that I really wanted to get it all crammed in there without making it seem too jumbled, and I really wanted to make it seem as seamless as possible through the editing process. Luckily, I had an excellent editor who helped me, but there were days when we would sit at the editing table with our heads in our hands, thinking, I don't know how to get here from here to there. I just don't know. <laughs> so you just keep on pressing. But I, I look forward to seeing the Philip Glass film. I've been looking at all the portrait docu documentaries, and there are a lot of good ones now, actually. Valentino and Tyson, and there's there, there are a lot of good ones. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for staying. It was really nice to show it to you. Thank you.